There is news this morning about Paul Whelan, an American businessman who has been unlawfully imprisoned in Russia for four years. Whelan has been out of touch with his family in recent weeks, and concerned embassy officials as well couldn't contact him. But now his brother and the State Department both say today he was allowed around 5 o'clock this morning Eastern time to call his parents and speak to embassy officials as well. We're learning from embassy officials that Whelan told them he was, quote, feeling fine, feeling well, despite being transferred to the prison hospital for a while. Joining me now is David Whelan, Paul Whelan's brother. David, I know you must be so relieved. Uh, did he, did your brother clear up the mystery about his whereabouts when he talked to your parents? Only that he was at the uh, prison hospital. Yes, it was a it was a great moment for my mom. Uh, she called me, not remembering that it would be two thirty in the morning here. Uh, but uh, yeah, she was really uh, thrilled thrilled to hear from Paul and to make sure that we all knew that uh, that he was healthy and ha had been moved to the hospital for reasons he didn't know and uh, was on his way back to IK seventeen. I mean, there was a real concern because he had not called on Thanksgiving. He usually calls on Thursdays. And the embassy was also prevented from talking to him. So the Russians were clearly stopping him from talking. I mean, is there any way from these conversations, he knows obviously they're listening, to say more about the conditions he's living under? Uh, he is able to say some things, but he's very careful. And obviously, we're very careful sharing uh, even those uh, sure. bits of information with the media because we don't want uh, them to retaliate against him. But. Uh, yeah, it's it's a mystery, and I'm not sure he'll be able to uh, clear it up. He has been moved, uh, as he was when President Putin and President Biden met in Geneva. He was moved away from the camp for a month, I think, just to... They do it when they want to keep him isolated so that he can't communicate about things that he's seeing. So there may have been some activities at the uh, labor camp that he wasn't supposed to be witness to. What is your sense about any progress at all on negotiations to get Paul and Brittany Griner out? Uh, because U.S. officials have been crying for months. They say there was a good offer on the table. We know from other sources it involved Victor Boot, the arms dealer that Vladimir Putin really wants back. And Putin and others were saying that the Russians wanted at least two, you know, two for two. And we don't know what else was on the table. Right. And, uh, and we don't know either. We saw in the media the same speculation. Uh, and I think what we're finding is that the uh, President Putin has uh, appointed someone to be the negotiator for that, that side, and that person is the uh, person who's now obstructing the ability to come to a conclusion. Uh, and, and in typical Kremlin fashion, the reciprocity of the cruelty is is uh, is there as well. So Paul Whelan will not be coming home for Christmas. Brittany Griner will not be coming home for Christmas. But also, uh, Grandfather Frost is not going to be taking uh, Elizaveta Boots' uh, father home for her. So she'll be missing uh, her father. Roman Selesnev won't be going home to see Svetlana, his mom. So, I mean, it's it's really unfortunate. Uh, I don't know who this person is or what sort of pat on the head you want from uh, President Putin, um, but he is doing it uh, in a way that is now cruel to families from from both countries. He's doing it to his his comrades, his his, his uh, countrymen as well as uh, Americans. I mean, there had been some hope among the diplomats with whom I spoke that after the midterms, uh, that maybe Putin would relent, that he was trying to avoid giving you know. Joe Biden a big victory, a diplomatic victory before the midterm elections. So maybe still, now that the midterms are out of the way, maybe after the holidays. Perhaps, yes. I I'm not getting my hopes up. I think the, the people involved in the, this uh, decision, whoever they are, um, they have ulterior motives, probably personal to themselves, maybe uh, to save their own hides in the uh, repeated disasters related to Ukraine or, or whatever else is going on in Russia. Uh, and so um, that may be driving it more than anything else. So I think we still have months and, and maybe maybe longer for, uh, for us to see a result. And have you, are you satisfied with what the government is doing, what the State Department, what the White House is doing? Yes, as far as I can tell, and from conversations my sister has had with uh, people in the Biden administration, um, well, well, first, they've made the concession, which I think is, is the most important step. And second, they sound like they are trying to find ways to meet the requirements of whoever this negotiator is in the Kremlin. Um, and it really is that person. Uh, that person is is focused very single-mindedly, apparently, on uh, certain concessions that the U.S. government is unable to make. Uh, and so the cruelty of, of Paul's detention, the cruelty of uh, Ms. Griner's detention is going to continue. Um, and as I say, it's uh, it's it's not just uh, American citizens who will suffer from, from this person's um, obstinacy. Well, David Whelan, our thoughts, our hearts are with you and your parents. Uh, that you. This will somehow get resolved. And wishing you all the best 
you know, as you continue to hope for some sort of progress. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you.